My Garmin Edge 540 Bike GPS review. Here's the too long can't be asked to watch. The Edge 540 is compact and to these eyes at least, an attractive hunk of chunk on my handlebars. It's incredibly feature packed. Garmin has had years to hone this stuff. All the training shizzle is excellent. The safety and security features are segment leading. The climbing feature is chef's kiss. And despite its feature packedness, technical term, the 540 is quite easy to use. Garmin has overhauled the software UI since the 530. Downside wise, there aren't many. It's not touchscreen, for that you'll need the 840. And of course, that's more money. Said smorgasbord of specs does naturally make it button press heavy, but it's only when map manipulating that you really miss the touchscreen. The screen is not particularly bright or contrasty, but battery life is excellent. And you probably don't need to buy the solar recharging version. So I've saved you a few quid. The Edge 540 is a good bike computer. It'll do everything you need and more. If it was me, I'd perhaps get the 840 with El Screeno Tucho, but it's a close run choice. I flip flop on a daily basis. If you buy one, the 540 that is, I don't think you'll be disappointed. That's the summary. If we're done here, I'll pat you on the bum for a click of the like button and you can leave. Everyone else, stay tuned for six things I like about the Edge 540 and algunas cosas que son meh. Vamanos! If you haven't been verbally tweaked by me before, I'm Monty and this is Sportive Cyclist, the Mammal Channel. I crimp out cycling videos, mainly road, little bit of indoor training, Laura Laura bike computer. Enough guff whiffle. Here's a quick introduction to the Edge 540. The Edge 540 continues in the tradition of its 5 Series ancestors. It's compact in terms of size, packed in terms of features, and buttons in terms of only. Looks wise, it's virtually identical to the Edge 840, since the latter now comes with all the buttons. The only difference, apart from the name on the charge port cover, seems to be the lighter gray strip of plastic around the uh, edges of the 540 versus the 840's monocolor persuasion. Let's investigate our nether regions where we encounter a USB-C charging port, which in Montgomery Towers at least, is welcomed and to be honest, standard. Features wise, it has all the usual on-ride data screens, recording and navigation jobbies. Gone are the days when Garmin kept substantial software features for only its most expensive computers. The 540 has almost everything found on the 840 and 1040. Instead, Garmin now differentiates mainly on screen size and touchability. The 540 has a smaller screen versus the 1040, and unlike the 1040 and 840, is not endowed with a touchscreen. There is the odd micro penis compromise. The 540 has half the storage, so can only store one continent of maps data, not two. And unlike the 840, it can't navigate on device to a specific street address. Big as they say, whoop. The 540 might languish second from bottom in the Garmin range, third if we include the happy-go-lucky Explore 2, but don't let them pull your pants down. This is a pro-level bike computer with a premium price. Now let's get into the things I like about the Garmin Edge 540, starting with the new user interface. With its X40 generation of bike computers, as no one says, Garmin has overhauled the Edge user interface or at least given it a light vajazzling. The home screen displays a series of feature widgets, which you can add to. The widgets display useful data in themselves. Select one and bethrux the detail you go. We still have the quick access menu, giving ready uh, access to sensor controls, phone notifications, real-time weather, smart light controls, and lists of nearby climbs and Strava segments. This latest Edge generation relies less on menu after submenu to access each feature. The menus still exist, but the refreshed interface does a good job of making the relevant setting easier to find and quicker to get to. I likes it. But having owned the 1040 and 840 for a while, I knew that already. My concern with the 540 was whether I'd like it as much without the touchscreen to finger fiddle around it. Which brings us neatly on to thing I like number two, the buttons. Well, not the actual buttons, 
but they're fine, it's using the buttons with said new Fandango GUI. I had low expectations, maybe that's why it's in the things I like bit rather than the things we'd expect because you know the section. It's surprisingly easy to operate. It's all very intuitive. The handy blue selector box tells you which widget you're about to tickle. The buttons to select an option or to go back make sense. There are handy screen prompts when things turn a bit more complex. The 840, unlike the 830, also has all of the buttons. I gave them a little fiddle as part of that review, but I didn't give them a fair crack of the chain whip. Touching screen was too tempting. Without that option on the 540, I soon found myself button whizzing around like a digit swinging mega god. I didn't miss the touchscreen, which is a pretty strong endorsement, except for the one major pain point on non touchscreen devices moving around and zooming on the map screen. This remains onerous as you have to switch between the dimensions left, right, up, down, zooming in and out before doing each one in isolation. It doesn't help that the screen size is bijou. Now to be clear, all the other navigation features work fine. Uploading a course, flashing up turn directions, routing on the fly. It's just map exploration that's a bit of a struggle. If you're going to be wrangling a lot of maps, particularly out of phone coverage, get a touchscreen device, ideally the larger Edge 1040. Climb Pro. Yeah, yeah, I know, you've seen my other video. I love Garmin's latest version of Climb Pro. So I'm pleased to report that the 540 has it. We get the more detailed, more colorful, more pro gradient charts. We get nearby climbs marked on the map and listed by proximity in the quick access menu. And most importantly, we get the Climb Pro screen kicking in when the 540 detects you've started a climb, even when not riding a preloaded route. I know the V2 Wahoo Element Bolt and Rome also have ride about climb spotting, as does the Hammerhead Route 2 and 3, but I like the Garmin version. It's a big tick in the bum for the Edge 540. Training features. Number four in my list of things I like and a challenge to cover succinctly. Big breath, Brenda, we have. Daily workout, trainer control, cycling ability, course demands, and that's not counting all the stats and pretty charts flashed up at the end of a ride that I find both fascinating and semi-useless at this particular point in my life journey. To that point, it's not lost on me that I'm saying all these training features are great whilst not using them to their fullest, or at all. I'm an enigma, locked up in a conundrum, wrapped up in a meldrew. I very much like that they're there. I enjoy recording and storing the data and trying to discern a hopefully improving pattern. When I finally have time to train properly, the salaryman's refrain, the 540's training feature stuffedness will come in extremely handy. Till then, it's a Porsche 996 I use to pick up washers from home base which is a metaphor. Battery life. <sighs> Tedious, but important, like child rearing. Garmin says the Edge 540 will do up to 26 hours in intense mode, which is my resting state. My inexhaustive testing, where the protocol involves riding about a bit and occasionally remembering I should be noting battery usage, suggests, yeah, good battery life. It depends on not being a dick though. Screen brightness on full bore and mega parsec connections to all the satellites, not just the positioning ones, and your ride recording is likely to end halfway through. For the non-dicks, in this experiment, let's say this includes me, the Edge 540's battery life is functionally unlimited. I can go multiple rides without charging. I rarely spend too many days deprived of a charging cable and a plug socket and it's USB-C, so it's quick to consume a pre-ride powerages if I'm caught short. Garmin Connect app integration. To be fair, this isn't Edge 540 specific, but being a non-touchscreen device, it gets the most benefit. Where before the Garmin app could update bits of bobs on older edges, now every setting on the 540 can be tweaked dans la app do what I do, and distract yourself from the crushing mundanity of modern life by crafting the perfect 10 field data screen whilst pebble dashing the family thunderbox. If you've already got a finesse suite of screens on said older hypothetical edge, you can easily transfer them across to the 540 when you connect it to, uh, 
connect. True, it's not groundbreaking. App integration has been at the core of the Wahoo Element range since the start, but it's a welcome improvement. Until we can conjugate mentally with our bike computers, the Edge 540 combined with the Garmin Connect app is about as flexible a fettle fiddler as you'll find. Now we turn to the things that are a bit meh with the Edge 540. To be fair, there aren't many, but in the interests of imbalance, solar charging, which actually this particular device doesn't have. It's the Edge 540 non-solar version. Tough financial times in the sportive cyclist household. After buying the 840 and 1040 both in solar spec, I listened to my own advice, gabbled out in various videos on those devices and saved the money. And I'm happy with the decision. Solar recharging, at least in my small, damp and cloudy part of the Danglo Saxon world, was adding approximately 20 seconds of additional battery life over the course of a regular ride. Maybe you bicycle in wall-to-wall -wall sunshine and perform 18-hour velopedal acts on the regular. If so, maybe you can justify paying extra for solar battery top-ups. For the rest of us, well, save the money. The screen is a bit uninspiring. I compared this 540 side by side with the 840 Solar, optician test style -y. Maybe the non-solar device is slightly clearer. There's no practical difference in the wild. But both screens, indeed all screens on Garmin devices, are outshone in terms of brightness, contrast, and non-reflectiveness by the V2 Wahoo Elements and the Hammerhead Karoo 2. And, I assume the three, I don't have one yet. It's not always obvious from the video, but the Bolt V2's lovely matte screen is a joy to peruse on the handlebar. The Hammerhead screen is also nice, but you pay for it, at least with the Karoo 2 in fewer battery life. And the Bolt can show a single large font size data field, where the 540 can't. Quite. Non Edge 540 alternatives. The compact bike computer market has historically been pretty competitive. That said, the Edge 540 is one of only a small number of non touchscreen options to be released in recent years. It's the choice then for those that want the newest new thing. The obvious button only alternative is the Wahoo Element Bolt V2 for which I still have warm loinal rumblings. If simplicity and ease of use is your driver, then the Bolt is probably the better choice. But it's getting on a bit. You wonder whether Wahoo has a successor planned. If training sophistication is your bent and you want to save some money, take a look at the 540's predecessor, the Edge 530. I'll link to a few of my videos on it in the description. Brighton has some options, as does IGP Sport. IGPS port. The Brighton computers I've tried are generally good, certainly in terms of value, but prone to the odd software brain fart now and then. The IGP Sport bike computers I've not tried. Bad bike tech reviewer. If you want a touchscreen, there's the Edge 840. If the budget is tighter, the Edge 830 remains a very capable alternative. And with that, we're done. Relevant links in the description. Let me know what you think of the Edge 540 in the comments. Now, I've lost the like button. If you happen to spot it, then please do click it.